Hey guys, it's Chelsea Messenger with Picks and Parlays with a free baseball pick. Hey guys, it's Chelsea Messenger from Picks and Parlays. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell if you want notifications every time we post a new video. We're talking Phillies Red Sox in this one. Phillies are favored minus 115. The Red Sox are the home underdogs at plus 105. The total is 10 and a half runs. Uh, Scott Riggenbach is joining us to talk this matchup uh, where we have Zach Eflin on the mound for the Phillies and Zach Godley on the mound for the Red Sox, who's 0-2 with an 816 ERA. I'm not going to lie, it's going to be tough to back the Red Sox with Godley on the mound and also seven straight losses entering this taping. The Phillies swept the Mets, but then before that, they got swept by the Orioles. So what's your take on this Phillies-Red Sox game? Yes, Chelsea, you're right. And that's I'm really glad that you brought that up about the sweep uh, that the Phillies suffered at the hands of the Orioles before facing the Mets. Uh, you've talked about this before, and it's so true about the importance of momentum in sports and in baseball. When you talk about that mood of the clubhouse, the Phillies have had a rough start this season before the Mets series. And in that series against the Orioles, they had an infield pop-up that the third baseman called for and ran and uh, over the mound and felt basically lost his footing going over the mound and didn't even end up getting his glove on the ball. And it was the first baseman's ball all the way. That was kind of rock bottom for the Phillies. They lost that game to the Orioles. It was a ridiculous play like the Bad News Bears and extremely deflating. The thing is they turned it around with a ninth inning win on a clutch hit and a play at the plate that was just good fundamental baseball, just uh, teamwork. Uh, there, there was a guy, uh, JT Riamuto was in the on-deck circle and he was directing the guy coming from third how to slide into home. Now, the reason I'm digressing so much here about this, though, is just because, again, the importance of momentum in sports, that flipped the switch for the Phillies. And they turned that then into a three-game sweep. And then they were off on Monday. For the Red Sox, a much different situation. They, like you said, lost seven straight games that was entering Monday night's game. And guess where that game was? In the Bronx against the Yankees, their biggest rival. It's been an ugly series for the Red Sox, but you know they wanted some games in that series. And what are they doing in the final game of the series? They're sitting through a long rain delay. The Red Sox season just seems like it can't get any worse. And in terms of this pitching matchup, one thing I want to mention Godley for the Red Sox, he's a former Diamondback. So he, of course, pitched in the National League. He's faced the Phillies. He's got some good numbers against the Phillies. But, guys, it's very important to look when you're handicapping and looking at a situation like that. Guess what? A lot of the players that he faced with those Phillies are no longer Phillies. And the Phillies have other guys that have had a little bit of success against him that are going to be facing him in this start. And the thing is, he is struggling early this season. I like Eflin for the Phillies. He's got good stuff. And uh, he's got a nasty sinker that has been working for him. And here's the other key, the Red Sox have not faced him. Uh, they have very little familiarity with him because of course he's a National League pitcher and AL team and there's only a couple players that have seen him. So I really like the Phillies in this spot, ride the momentum. And again, we're getting line value here because they're on the road and laying a small price about 115. So my play here is on the Phillies in this one. You know what? I looked for every reason to maybe take the Red Sox here just because they're home underdogs here, and they do have a good lineup, but everything points to no. Uh, I certainly don't want to take them when Zach Godley is on the mound because this year he's just been so bad. 0-2 with an 816 uh, ERA. The Red Sox, just their body language just looks bad. And it's just the Red Sox are one of those teams. They're either winning championships or they're in dead last. And it looks like it's going to be one of those years uh, where they're dead last. However, I do not love the Phillies bullpen. It has the worst ERA in the big leagues by far. So I think I'm going to back the Phillies in the first uh, five. I'm going Phillies first five money line at minus 120 just because I'm afraid sooner or later the Red Sox have to win a game <laughs> like I would assume <laughs> yes. so I just I'm not going to take them with Zach Godley starting is my problem especially going against Eflin who uh, has 15 strikeouts in just 10 innings of work because 0 and 1 with 360 ERA that's not that impressive but the strikeouts are to me so I think that's why I'm back in the Phillies in the first five at least in this one yes and that's a good point about the bullpens here and the only thing I would add is that one edge that the Phillies do have they have a couple of good arms at the very back end of the bullpen and the key here is they had an off day Monday too, so that helps guys to be fresh. 
And the other thing is Boston's bullpen is not so good either early this season. So, But I, I do think that your play is a great way to play this game because then you don't have to even worry about the pens. Just look at this starting pitching matchup. And like you said about the body language of the Red Sox, it's been down. And then you look at the Phillies. They finally got it going three-game sweep of a division rival. Uh, this one sets up well for the Phillies to get the job done. So good good point on that five-inning line. I like that that take on this as well. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our Phillies Red Sox talk here on Picks and Parlays. Uh, thanks, as always, Scott, for your insight.